This is my personal Land Rover LR3. It has a 4.4 V8, and we're gonna show you the procedure on filling the transmission because we have a dripping plug. Okay, so we wanna raise the vehicle all the way up, if at all possible, to avoid using a jack and having to lower it down so it stays on level flat ground. Now we wanna to move to underneath the vehicle prior to starting it up and while it's still cold. Because we have to work around the exhaust to get the fill plug out, we need to do it while it's cold. And keep in mind that we are not going to pull the drain plug, which is on the bottom of the pan. The fill plug is on the side. I'll go over why we don't drain out the fluid later on in the video. We don't wanna drain out the fluid before we take out the filler plug because it can be difficult to get out. Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Clay with the Clay Way here in Muskegon, Michigan. And if this video is helpful, please consider subscribing, clicking the notification, sharing my videos. Give me that sweet old thumbs up. If you decide to speed on through and skip all of my yammering, please go back to the beginning of the video, turn that volume down and let it play all the way through. Your pension is how we get paid here on YouTube. And it takes several hours to do a 30 minute job so I can make these videos for you guys. If you've got a question for me and it's not baby mama drama related or that burning feeling when you're peeing, you can ask it on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook Messenger. I certainly try to help everyone that I possibly can for absolutely free. I don't collect information. I don't care about you. Blah, blah, blah. I just want to help you out if I can. I don't know at all, folks. Remember, if anyone else can do it, I promise you. You can do it too. Don't be the next to them, be the first to you. Let's get going, get this done. Approximately in this location right here is where our fill plug is gonna be. It is separate from the drain plug, which is on the very bottom of the pan. According to the information that I have, the fill plug is supposed to be an eight millimeter Allen, but I actually found that the 10 millimeter Allen worked, but that may be because I stripped it out to begin with. So what do you want? right behind the exhaust and i'm going to show you how that's done and how we get that loose it was a real pain in the butt this is the transmission check procedure to check the fluid level i recommend you loosen up the check screw before you start the vehicle as you can tell from the picture on the right the drain plug is on the bottom the fill plug is on the left picture and down there it gives you the torque specifications as well the drain plug is located right behind the catalytic converter right there this is the drain plug location and as you can see it's right about here now well because i'm legally blind and not so intelligent sometime i stuck a t47 in there and started to strip out the hole don't make the same mistake even though i later realized that this was probably a 10 millimeter but try an 8 millimeter first make sure it's not loose inside there so now we're going to go ahead and remove the drain plug we can actually remove it before we start the vehicle now we've got a long extended ratchet and we've got it up into the location we're going to turn it counterclockwise okay spraying some penetrant up there I misfired a couple times. I'm glad this didn't happen when I made my little folks. I love them guys. This thing was stinking tight. Unbelievable. Gosh darn. So I don't want to take any chances of stripping out that socket. So what I've done is I've grabbed me some extensions and a wobble and I've got me an impact driver. And if I use this, then more than likely I'll be able to break that free without stripping it out. So I've managed to potentially create a deadly situation for myself. I couldn't get it broke loose with this deep Torx, which was probably the wrong size. So then I went to a shallow socket. So I know what you're thinking. This dummy used the wrong socket and that's why he couldn't get it out. Well, I'll tell you, it actually fit pretty well inside there. So I hardly doubt that was a problem. And eventually I do get it out. With this long ratchet i couldn't get it to break loose even after spraying penetrant on it so then i got an impact out hooked that to the end of there and tried hitting the crap out of it so then i got an adapter out on that gun that has never not broken anything free could not spin it and the reason it couldn't spin it is because it's taking away all the torque running up through the extensions there 
So you can see that I have a really, really shallow socket in there as not to lose torque by having extensions. This thing ain't budging. So I had to use that shallow socket and then I had to put my foot on the end of the ratchet to push that thing to get it loose even after the penetrant and stuff. Boy, that was really, really touching cloth and I felt like somebody was jacking me up in my corn store. Boy, okay, so now we wanna check and get the transmission temperature up to 103 degrees. Now we wanna let the vehicle warm up to 103 degrees. Now you can do this with the test light, but I can do it with my scanner, so I'm gonna do that. The reason that we loosened up the screw before and we did not take it out is so we could let it run up to operating temperature. Now, once we've started it, we wanna go down and check the drain plug and make sure it's not leaking. We're not trying to put in more fluid than necessary. Once it gets up to operating temperature, which is approximately 30 to 40 degrees Celsius, or anywhere from 90 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit, we put it in reverse, drop it all the way down into drive, let it sit there for a second, move it up to drop reverse, let it sit there for a moment, and then put it into park. This allows the transmission fluid to fill all the solenoids and go up through all the veins of the transmission and fill up the torque converter. It's very, very critical to let it get up to a good level operating temperature. You can put the vehicle in gear and hold it for a bit. It will raise the temperature, but now it's good enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through the rest of the procedure right now, even though it's technically supposed to be 90 degrees. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it into gear, put it into reverse, let it sit there a moment, put it down into drive, let it sit there a moment, and then put it up into reverse once again. And we also want to make sure, the reason that we do that is so the transmission fluid gets shifted up into the solenoids, allowing it to be out of the pan. So now we can go down with gloves and remove our screw. And if anything drips out, it's good. If nothing comes out, then it needs to be filled. And remove our screw while the vehicle engine is running. That's important because the torque converter and everything is spinning and it's got all the transmission fluid up inside all the components. Also, the reason that they do that is so it is up inside the components and not down inside the pan. Now I've equipped myself with a hoodie, a glove, and a long sleeve welding thing so I can get up in there and I can loosen that screw up. I'm not gonna attempt trying to loosen that up and hold the camera at the same time because I think that might give me a greater chance of burning myself but when we pull that plug out of there if fluid just drips out it does not need to be filled if no fluid comes out then it definitely needs to be filled and we'll go on to that procedure if that's necessary and I'm pretty sure it is in this situation now I've got the plug out and I don't have any fluid coming out so that means I need to fill it now they make a couple different things for this situation they have a pump that you can put on the end of the transmission fluid to be able to fill it but I use a syringe so I'm going to suck it up and squeeze it down inside there I'll show you that procedure right now take special note that I did leave my socket inserted into my screw that way I was able to screw it out without having to try to get the cap out of there or use a socket or a wrench so I use this, which is made by uh, Mighty Vac. You can find these for about 10 or 12 bucks on the interwebs. It'd be nicer to have a little bit longer hose, but it's not gonna make a whole lot of difference. So I fill this syringe up and I squeeze it in there. Unfortunately, it takes some time, but they make pumps for the tops of these, but because I'm using the Micron SP, and I don't wanna hear nothing about me using Micron SP, it's my vehicle, I can do what I want. They won't fit on here. So, it's a trade-off. Pay $20, $30 a bottle, or pay six bucks and pump your way to glory. Did I just say that? So now by simply sticking my injector up in there, I can pump down on the handle 
and push it up into the transmission. So now, we've filled it up, up that it's dripping out the weep pole. Definitely not the drip drip of gonorrhea, thank God. Now, before we turn the vehicle off, we must reinsert the drain plug, or in this situation, the filler plug and the check plug. The drain plug is a totally different one, and I'm gonna show you where that's at and explain to you why I did what I did. If you missed reading it, if you turn the vehicle off with the drain plug out, or fill plug out, I mean, you will lose all of your fluid. Your transmission drain plug is located right here on the back of the pan, near the transfer case, towards the rear of the transmission. When we look up at that black socket right there where the wire's go into, and it's got moisture on it, and that's what caused us to leak. Now, I personally never changed one of them myself, but I hear that they're rather inexpensive. Now, no matter what your plans are, do not drain your transmission fluid out before you remove the filler plug because you may not be able to get that out and you will be dead in the water. To get access to the drain plug, it's in between the transmission cross member and the pipe that goes beside it. You can reach up there with a long socket. Now, I'm going to use my vehicle as a guinea pig. I'm going to put in micro, Micron SP inside there. And because it has 170,000 miles on it, or 180 something now, I'm going to put some AT210 in there. This is an additive, and it's a slip modifier. I don't have any slipping, but I am about to take this vehicle on at least an 8,000 mile drive. If it goes out, it goes out. If it doesn't, you can ask down in the con comments how it went. I did do some research, and apparently this is a cost-effective way to put transmission fluid in here. Some might say, hey, why not just put the right stuff in there? Well, this is YouTube, and I don't mind being your guinea pig. So I ended up putting about two quarts in this thing. Now, if you're asking yourself, Clay, why did you not drain all the fluid out? Well, I'm pretty old, and I've been around the block a couple times, and inside that transmission, we have all sorts of clutches that are working, and they're kind of like sandpaper pads, and they rub up against one another, and all that friction material drops down inside the fluid, and when you take all that fluid out of there because you didn't know how long it's been in there and how if it's been changed or not, you actually take all that grip and grime and stuff out of that transmission. So for me personally... I don't mess with transmission fluid that often. It's hydraulic, it's supposed to stay at a certain temperature, and if it stays at that certain temperature and doesn't get too hot, you're really not going to break down that transmission fluid the same way you would if your transmission's getting hot and you're doing a lot of pulling and stuff. So when you're doing a lot of pulling with your vehicle, no matter what kind of vehicle you have, it's always best to put a transmission cooler in it. These probably come factory with the transmission cooler would be my assumption that's separate from the actual radiator itself, unlike most vehicles. But that's just my opinion. I don't change transmission fluid. I'll add to it because of that seeping seal on that connector inside there. But since I've been doing this for the last two days, I've put about 200 miles on it. It's been driving excellent. I haven't had any problems. My shifting's much better. So we'll see how it lasts. Just ask down there in the comments, you know, check me out in a week or two after this video was made. And I should have a definitive answer for you because we were having some shuttering and we were having some disengagement of the transmission. But a lot of that seems to be gone now that we've filled it up to the proper level and everything seems to be working much better with the vehicle. Even though I didn't perform the drain procedure, I wanted to add these instructions for you folks so you're able to do it. When I originally performed the fill procedure, it didn't tell me anything about reaching around the hot exhaust and all of that stuff, so I had to figure that out on my own. I hope that you folks enjoyed the video, and I hope that this comes in handy for you if you decide to change your transmission fluid. Even though it's not my recommendation, if you don't know the service intervals of the transmission fluid, I would probably just leave it in myself. And if you're having a problem, go ahead and drain it. But more than likely, the problem's going to continue because there's probably something internal going on inside your transmission. When you remove all of them debris from them clutch disc, it's not very helpful to the transmission to have an extended period of life. So keep that in mind when you're doing it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and gals as well. 
Uh, and if the video was helpful, please consider subscribing, clicking the notification, sharing my videos, and give me them sweet old thumbs up. If you've got a question for me and it's not baby mama drama related, you can ask it on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook Messenger. I certainly try to help everyone I possibly can for absolutely free. I don't share information, none of that jazz. Remember, if anyone else can do it, I promise you, you can do it too. Don't be the next of them. Be the first of you. God bless and have the best of days.